Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still on mathematics N5. Uh, in this platform, we shall be focusing on the limits and continuity, which is uh, one of the most important parts that you need to know in your syllabus. Uh, on question number one, uh, you'll be given such type of a question. So this is April 2020 that we're going to revise uh, from and apply uh, the rules uh, that we have when you're dealing with limits and uh, when you're dealing with uh, continuity. All right, so that is uh, question 1.11, uh, 1, 1, where we have got uh, a condition uh, where we are given to determine the following limits. So that was the question. Uh, we are given to determine the first limit uh, having three marks for that. Okay, so let us uh, just have our question aside. Uh, so this was the limit of, so we are given the limit in this case of 9x minus one, uh, everything over three, then we are given uh, the square root of x minus one like this. And we are given this limit is going to approach when x uh, is uh, at uh, one over nine. So x is actually approaching one over nine. So we know that uh, if we are dealing with limits, the first thing that we are supposed to do is to test the values that uh, the value of x that we are given for the limits when x is one over nine. So if you are to substitute here in place of x on uh, nine here, it's going to be something like this, nine by one over nine minus one everything over three, then you've got the square root of one over nine minus one. So this is the indication that you're simply doing on your calculator. Uh, this is going to give you a zero over a zero like that. So on the numerator, that's a zero. In the denominator, that's a zero. So if this condition is happening, guys, when you substitute the value of x, you obtain a zero in the numerator and in the denominator. There, you are supposed to apply the L hospitals rule. So in this case, we are going to apply L uh, hospitals rule. All right, so this is what we are going to have in this case. So from this rule, what does it state? You're simply differentiating the numerator, then you differentiate the denominator as well. Uh, then you substitute the limits again. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we are going to have our limit as X is, uh, is approaching to one over nine. So if you are to find the first derivative with respect to X in the numerator, that's 9x, which is going to give us 9. Take note, this is just 9, guys. Okay, so it's going to be 9 over. Then we have got uh, 3 square root of x. Let's see what you're going to have. Remember, square root of x is same as to the exponent of a half. So this is same as 3x to the exponent of a half minus 1. So what is the derivative of 3x? Remember, guys, the derivatives that you multiply, then you subtract a 1. So if you multiply here, half times a 3, that is uh, 3 over 2. So if you are to find this derivative, uh, you're going to obtain uh, 3 over 2 in this case. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 3. We've got a 3 over 2. Then x, we subtract 1, which is going to be to the negative uh, 1 over 2. Half minus 1, that's minus 1 over 2. So this is what you're going to obtain uh, after differentiating this part, which is going to give us three over two X to the exponent of a minus half, then minus one is a constant just like the in the numerator. So that one is going to be a zero. Okay, so X is going to approach to one over nine. That means in place of X, we're going to substitute uh, one over nine in this case. Okay, so let's see what you're going to have. So this is going to be like this. You're going to have uh, nine over so this is three over two, then we've got nine, uh, one over nine actually, yeah. So this is one over nine, everything to the exponent of a negative half. Okay, so let's see what you're going to obtain here. So let me just share this whole screen so that we can see uh, the calculator here. Uh, so we've got, um, this is what we have here. So it's going to be nine over, so yes, yeah, best for you to just open a bracket. We can just multiply like that, that's three over two like this, then whatever that you have here, you multiply to one over nine in brackets. So you can just open a bracket that is one over nine like this. You close the bracket to the exponent, that's to the exponent here of negative one over two. Okay, so that's it. Uh, let's see what you're going to have in this case. Uh, sorry for that. So this is going to be uh, a two. So in this case, this whole part 
is going to give us a two. So that's what you're going to have as a resultant uh, that is a two. So uh, if you are given the integrals, guys, uh, the, the derivatives, actually, that, that is the one that you're working with, you are given the derivatives. Make sure that each and every part is done properly. The application of the derivatives and also the substitution of the numbers that you're given. So as you can see, two is a whole number. That's there's nothing that you can do. You can't uh, keep on differentiating again and again. No, no, no. That is the part that you are going to have at the end. Okay. So uh, let's see uh, what we had on the other part of the question. That is limit again, but this time it's a trig. Okay. So they say work with a trig there. Okay, so let's see our trig aside, that's 1.12. So we are given in this case, the limit as X is approaching to zero. So X is approaching to zero in this case, and we are given uh, cosec X. So this is cosec X minus cot X. Okay, so this is what you're given in this case. Uh, so for you to test properly, uh, the values of x when x is approaching to, to zero in this case. Remember, uh, you are supposed to have a fraction, okay? We are supposed to actually have a fraction. So how can we have this as a fraction? Because these are just like normal numbers that we, we know are, are in actual sense. Okay, so this is what you're going to have. Uh, this is going to be limit. X is approaching to zero. We know that cosec from our trigonometry this is one over sine. So we're going to have one over sine of X minus cot, which is equivalent to cos X over the sine of X. All right, so this is what you're going to have in this case. All right, so that is uh, uh, this expression as a, as a fraction, but it's supposed to be a combined fraction, just like what we have so that we can actually test what is happening if it is x over y like this? If you substitute, is it going to be infinity over infinity? Is going to be zero over zero? You need to test that if it is a single fraction. So what you're going to do is to express as a single fraction. So express as a single fraction. All right. So as a single fraction, guys, what are we going to obtain in this case? That is the question now. So this is what you're going to have. Uh, we are going to have the limit as x is approaching to zero of, as you can see, the numbers here are actually the same. So we're just going to combine the numerators together. That's one minus cos of x. So we put one minus cos of x like this. So that's what you're going to have. All right. We are saying that as x is approaching to, to a zero. Okay. So let us test the values and see what you're going to have. First, let us start with the numerator here. Uh, so let's see the calculator again so that we can test these values. So we're going to have this, uh, make sure that your calculator is in degrees. So that's one minus cos zero. So take note, this is cos zero, which is giving us a zero. Okay, so here we are going to obtain a zero over sine of X, which is sine zero. So sine zero guys, that's a zero. This one you're supposed to know it, or you can just use your calculator sine of zero like this. That's a zero. Okay, so we are going to obtain a uh, zero over zero. The moment we obtain this, we are back again to apply the oil hospitals rule. Okay, that is differentiate both the numerator and the denominator at the same time. Okay, so that's what you're going to have. So it's going to be the limit as X is approaching to zero of one, it's a constant, so that's a zero. So you're going to have zero minus the derivative of cos, remember that if you differentiate cos, it gives us a negative uh, sign of x. So minus and the minus, that's a plus. So this is going to, gi to give us sine x over the derivative of sine x, which is uh, cos of x. Okay, we try again to apply the limit when x is approaching to zero. Remember, we talked about these values before. Uh, the sine of x, when x is equal to zero, this one gives us a zero cos of x is equal to one. So we are remaining with a zero divided by one and zero divided by one, guys, that's a zero. This one, it's, you can simplify, but you can't uh, simplify one over zero like this. This one is actually equivalent to infinity, but in this case, we can simplify. So our answer was going to be a zero if x is approaching to one over nine for that uh, part that we're given. Uh, so these are the typical questions that you're going to have. 
and you must be very, very careful uh, when dealing with these uh, typical questions, especially on uh, differentiating and uh, substituting back the limits that you're given. All right, so that was question 1.1 or 1.2. On 1.2, we are given determine the values of x for which f of x is discontinuous. So what does it mean actually to say an expression is discontinuous, f of x is discontinuous? What does it mean? All right, um, let's start by writing the question uh, so that you can explain this part. Okay, we are given, this is 1.2 where we are given that our f of x is equivalent to x squared uh, plus 4x minus 12, and everything that we're given was over x squared minus 2x. So whenever you're given a, a consideration that the, the function is discontinuous, it means the denominator is supposed to be equal to zero. So in this case, our denominator is supposed to be equal to zero. Okay, so that's our denominator is supposed to be equal to zero. And in this case, our denominator is x squared minus two x. So x squared minus two x is supposed to be equal to zero. Do not consider or do not worry about the numerator. You are considering the denominator in this case. Okay, so that's what you're going to have. So as you can see, we have formulated an equation that you are supposed to solve. So how do you solve this type of an equation? You can factor out x because it's common here. So x squared divided by x, which is x, minus 2x divided by x, x and x will cancel. That will be minus two is equal to zero. So from the zero concept, we know that each bracket is supposed to be equal to zero. So x is equal to zero or x minus two is equal to zero. So that means x is going to remain as a zero here. Or on the other side, if we transpose, that is going to be plus two here. So x is going to be two. So these are the values of x that we have that will make this denominator be equal to zero. And by having this denominator being equal to zero, it means uh, this function is uh, discontinuous. So that's what we had, guys, uh, on the limits and uh, continuity. Uh, more to come from us on African motives. Let us uh, keep on revising as much patience as possible. If you, are, if you are new, you can consider subscribing so that you become the new uh, part of our family and also to join membership so that you can access uh, other videos uh, and also uh, many questions from there if you're part of the membership family uh, that can actually assist you as you are revising uh, to have more questions and also to ask uh, other questions uh, using this platform. So that's what it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.